The Canadian Broadcasting Corporation presents the International Racquetball Classic. As players compete for $10,000 in prize money and the Leech Cup. This afternoon, a men's semifinal featuring Dave Peck as he trades shots with Mike Yellen, a game that should be a dandy. Hello again, everyone. This is Scott Oak. Welcome back to the Court Sports Club in Winnipeg for more of the CBC International Racquetball Classic. A couple of weeks ago, we saw world champion Marty Hogan advance to the men's final. This afternoon, we'll find out who his opponent will be as we play the remaining semifinal match. It's between David Peck of El Paso, Texas, third ranked on the Pro Tour. He'll meet Mike Yellen, the second ranked professional. He's from Detroit, Michigan. David, safe to say the winner of this afternoon's match is going to be one tire player. Mike and I always have a grueling match. Uh... The winner of this will be a little tired, but due to our superior conditioning, Mike and I, whichever one, we shouldn't be too bad off. Mike, you're a great control player in the quarterfinals. You did control the power game of Don Thomas. Can you do the same to the power game of Dave Peck? Well, uh, hopefully so. I'll be you know, playing pretty well, and it's really just a matter of uh, how well Dave plays. Uh, we always have tough matches. A lot of times they're decided by a point or two, and uh, I'm sure we're ready for another one of those this afternoon. Okay, we look forward to some great action. To describe it for you, here are Don Whitman and Charlie Brumfield. Thank you, Scott, and if we had Perry Mutual windows, I would seek the advice of five-time national champion Charlie Brumfield as to the winner. Well, I think I'd have to go with Mike Yellen in this one. Even though Peck held down a second spot all through the Pro Tour, Mike rested away from him with two wins in the final two events of the Tour. And in the Nationals, they met in the semifinals, and in the third game, Peck got a negative one. The negative Twinkie, the first time I've ever seen it in 15 years of play, and I, he has something to prove, but I don't think he can beat Mike. So you're going to select Mike Yell, and that leaves me no recourse but to go along with David Peck zero, zero. to win this semifinal match. Well, that serve looks short right there. There goes the forehand out the back wall, and he rolled it off. Let's see it in slow motion as Yellen appeals it. The drive down the left side. See if it passes that back red line. No, it's obviously at least six inches short. So Peck scored a point there on an inappropriate call by the referee, and he was upheld by his two blind linesmen. Nice get. Nice get there. Peck's got the easy backhand. I would say that of the players in the pro game right now, that from a set position, when he sets his feet, that Dave Peck is the most accurate of all the players, has the best kill shot. Can you see how he sets his feet there? He rumbles over, sets, and hits, and the ball is extremely low. And even with the flexibility and movement of a player like Mike Yellen, it's going to be a very, very difficult game. Yellen will gradually grind him down, though, with his wide-angle passing shots. Well, I hope that bad call and the appeal is not going to be a trend for this semifinal match, because it would certainly detract from the play of these two outstanding performers. Well, they've met three or four times this year, and I've had an opportunity to watch most of them in leisure because I was out of the tournament by then. So uh, I have seen them play, and most of the time they play very, very clean matches. So hopefully we'll have nothing to worry about. There's quite a bit of appealing going on early, though. You can hear the call by the referee up above. Short serve. Remember in racquetball, the serve has to hit the front wall and then carry over that second red line you see. If it does it, it's a short serve. You're allowed two serves in racquetball, so one of the first two serves has to go over the line. Nice pinch shot, but he left it up a little bit, but Yellen didn't. Yellen is very, very good in his passing game to force you to leave the ball up slightly in front court, then he'll come in and try to backhand flick it into the corner like he just did to that point. You have to sense the appropriate moment, such as Yellen chose right there to go for that kill shot? Well, I think timing is a big factor for a control player's Before. game. Like, Mike tries to set the game up. Most of the other top players, Peck included, generally will take their first reasonable opportunity to go for the bottom board, which we call a kill shot. Mike, on the other hand, relies on jockeying for position, which I consider the more cerebral approach. He'll go down the line with a backhand or wide angle cross court or ceiling ball and, and wait for the moment where he can hit a ball that does not have to roll off to still win. And that's why 
Match after match, day after day, year after year, Mike Yellen will rarely lose to a player worse than he is, whereas a fellow like Peck, if he is not on that particular day, he can get beat by beating himself. Yellen will never do that, and that's why I'm picking him in this match. Careful. He appealed to get uh, the referee Five, three. upheld Peck's get, and uh, Yellen was a little upset, and you heard the caution from the referee, be careful. Point. I don't think we've had a technical so far in the tournament, and what constitutes a technical <laughs> foul, actually? Well, that's the referee's discretion Six, as to whether or not some unsportsmanlike outburst has occurred. For instance, there, Mike hit the ball after the rally was over, and uh, when you go for the eyes like that or someone gets hit after the rally's over, they tend to get quite perturbed, so the referee will control that, initially sometimes by a warning. If I would have seen that as a referee, I would have called a technical right there because the ball should never be hit once the rally has been concluded by the referee's call. Seven, three. Yellen has a reputation of being calm and composed at all times. He appears to be moving away from that right here. That's a good observation. Perhaps it's because these two players have had such a close confrontation. They're both playing for who is going to be the number two player in the country. Hogan's got the number one position pretty much held down. He's won 26 of the last 32 tournaments or something like that. But with these guys, they're very, very close as to who's two and three. In addition, they both represent the same company in San Diego, Ectalon, and both of them want to be the top dog for their particular team. And furthermore, Peck is really upset about getting beat 11 to negative one. He looked bad in that match, and he, in fact, he made one miscue that I've never seen even a novice make. He had an absolute setup ball in the cruise, went to take the shot, and hit the ball on his own backswing backwards. <laughs> you don't, don't see that, that every day. Nice flip shot. See how Dave took that ball right off his back foot there, contrary to the old style, as you learn in Marty's tips of the front foot and popped it in. Nine, three. Excellent wrist action. And of course, Dave, who is a former fullback and wrestling champion, has excellent upper body strength. He has also taken early control of this game. 9 3 the score, but a good shot by Yellen to move into the serving box. 3 9. Yellen will often go with soft, tight serving, particularly early in the match in an attempt to, there's a hinder ball where Yellen was obstructed by Peck in his attempt to move straight for the ball. But Yellen will often go with soft Z serves and soft garbage serves to move the game down to a control level. Uh, Peck, on the other hand, rarely goes with a soft serve on his first serve, but will bang the ball in the attempt to get the absolute ace or the very, very weak return and shoot it immediately. Aficionado is undoubtedly aware of all the terminology that you come up with in the racquetball, but for those who aren't familiar, the term hinder and the avoidable hinder. What is the difference? Well, the hinder ball is a referee's discretion because unlike most racket sports, for instance, tennis, you're on the same turf as your opponent. You're in a little closed arena, and it can get quite physical down there, particularly with two beefs like these two guys. One of them looks like the Michelin tire man, the other is the Pillsbury Doughboy. So they're gonna be in each other's way a little bit. When they do get in the way, the referee has to make a determination whether the obstacle, namely the other opponent, is in such a position that he prevents you from getting a fair swing at the ball. If a hinder is called, it ordinarily results in a mere replay. An avoidable hinder borders almost on the intentional whether the reasonable player of the pro caliber could have avoided the contact. Um, that may sound difficult, but I'm sure we'll see. This match is getting pretty tightly contested position-wise. We may see some avoidables as we go along. Not much doubt about that skip in by Dave Peck. No, when it bounces over the head of the opponent off the floor, you know it's been a skip. Dave doesn't do many of those. Now there's an approach shot where he went inside the five-foot line. We've made this point several times in our telecast. That play is illegal in the United States Pro Tour for safety reasons. We feel on the United States Pro Tour that if you go inside the imaginary five-foot zone behind that back red line, that it constitutes the chance for a waffle face because the server doesn't really know where you are. He's trying to back out and establish his center court position. Nice pinch shot by Peck. Let's watch Peck in the serving box. He seems to put a spin on that ball as he drops it down. He does. That's an idiosyncrasy that he has. He, what Peck tries to do is to give you the look like he's going to the left all the time and set up his down-the-line serve to the, to the right. Most of Peck's aces come on that shot to the right side. 
Nice shot. See how he wide angle it? Now, right at Peck's feet's his weakness, but there he pulled one out of his hat there. Most of the time when you can get it at a big man's feet, you can handcuff him, and he'll pop it up for a setup. That time, Yellen, I think, did exactly what he should have done, driving the ball, landing directly at Peck's feet, and Peck sort of did a little hop and popped it in underhanded. Nice movement by both players. Now, there, that is... They call an avoidable hinder on that. Let's watch this in replay. Here comes the ball, and instead of going away from the play, which would have left him vulnerable, he jumped directly in front of Mike Yellen. The reasonable player should not have done that, although I don't think Peck did it intentionally. It does constitute an avoidable hinder. Intent is not a necessity. Wide angle pass, Peck has the forehand off the back wall. Left it up slightly, and now he's on the tour. Yellen goes straight down, and there's that beautiful soft pinch that he got from his pickup games and squash. Seven what about Peck's background? Did he play squash or handball or any other games? Surprisingly enough, Peck has never really played any racket or court sports before, which makes it all the more unbelievable that in two years he's skyrocketed to the top two or three positions in the world. He was a football seven, seven. player in El Paso, and uh, to borrow a line from Lyndon Johnson in reference to Gerald Ford, he played one too many games with his helmet off, so now he started to move into the less contact games, uh, such as racquetball. But if these two big guys run into each other, I think you're going to see a close encounter of the fourth kind. Peck weighs at least 210, and Yellen ain't far behind. Nice service, just barely over that line. That's what you want to aim for in your drive. Now, that's a funny call there. That ball was very, very low that Peck hit down the line, but the referee determined, see, Mike's got a little grin. He knows that he's had some bad calls earlier, but that was it. Peck's Peck's telling the referee what he thinks about it. Wait till later. He just said, wait till later. I don't know what that meant, but I wouldn't want him meeting me after the match. They should call a timeout, of course. Check the ball. Throws a long toss. Uh, what was that? There was a dispute on that hitter call. Peck hit the ball well. I thought it was a point. Little bickering back and forth. The referee has to establish control of the match at this point. It was a bad call, but you're going to make, I'd say racquetball is the hardest game in the world to referee because it's judgment as to whether Yellen could have got that ball or not. There's no doubt he didn't get a real clear view of it because of Peck's girth, but the ball was still down. Here's the back end of the back wall, one of Peck's best shots, and he demonstrates it right there, right into the corner for a winner. And they exchange pleasantries. 13-7. Why is it the guy who is in front is always smiling? <laughs> that was an unusual yeah. play. Hit him on the foot, I think. You don't see this too often. Peck lost control of his serve, and he didn't get out of the way in time. It didn't hit him on the, the foot. Leg. In fact, if that had gone up any higher, it could have been the match. Sidewall shot, keeps the ball higher. There's a little soft exchange to the ceiling. Skip ball. You don't see that very often when Dave can set his feet. Once again, precise player. Peck holding his racket up. Unlike in tennis, which has a rule of continuity of play, racquetball allows either player to assert 10 seconds between the time where the ball is given to him and when it's put into play. Nice wide angle. Good down the line. Lucky pin shot. Watch Yellen go back and tweak that ball off the side wall. That was very, very nice and the kind of play that can be very discouraging to an opponent because Peck had hit a nice wide angle pass that got in well behind Mike. 9-13. Good backhand. You pointed out earlier his strength. Yellen thought his serve was short. He's entitled to appeal that. Call it serve good. Mr. Yellen's appealing. He didn't get the short call, so then he asked the referee whether it was a screen. That's a, he's grasping for straws at that point. Peck made a nice backhand return. Tit for tat. Oh, good backhand tweak shot. Dave Peck in control, and uh, he went on to win the game 21-9. And uh, that came as a surprise, I think, and puts my man out in front. My prediction is in jeopardy, but Yellen has tremendous physical reserves. I've never seen him get tired. And if he can stick in there and establish the rhythm once again, I think he'll come back in game two. Let's join Scott Oak. Steve, Mike tried to slow you down a lot, but uh, you were hitting the ball well. 
I feel really strong right now. We've uh, we had a couple of rallies where uh, Mike won the rally, I won the rally, you know, and vice versa. And I just was fortunate enough to hit some lucky shots and put it away. Basically, I'm I'm killing the ball better than I did uh, against Lindsey, especially the first game. And so I just got to keep killing it and uh, trying to keep him sort of off balance. Like you thought you'd have to, you are working hard. I'm working extremely hard. He's this guy is so tough. Uh, a guy gets everything. If you don't put the ball away, you just uh, you eat it. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. Okay, we'll see what happens in game two between Dave Peck and Mike Yellen after this commercial break. Well, as we move from Marty Hogan's tip to game two, I might say, Charlie, that your prediction is in jeopardy. Yeah, it don't look good right now, but Yellen is a tremendously steady player. There's not ups and downs, and I think you'll find he'll gradually wear Dave down, absent extenuating circumstances like six, the sun six. getting in his eyes. So let's see what happens here. The score is tied. Slow pace, slow pace, gradually grinding down if he can. Good shot by Peck, because that was a pretty good shot by Yellen. Went down the line with the low ball. Peck was able to get his gigantic body moving in time to snap it straight across. Peck uses an unusual grip on his backhand, a, a very, very almost uh, western grip where the racket is really turned down. It's a little bit difficult for him to hit those balls that are behind him, but when he's going forward, he's got excellent power. Two good shots by Peck there. And, He's beginning to go with a soft serve. I don't know whether there's a little bit of fatigue or whether he's trying to play Yellen's game on purpose. I can't believe the latter. Tough shot by Peck on the run, and he's not noted for his ability to play on the move. Primarily a setup player. When he gets that part of his game down, he'll be a true threat to Marty Hogan. You see the pace of the play has slowed down considerably, Don. They're both He's taking it very easily at the moment. I don't think that's necessarily to Yellen's advantage right now is to stick with the ceiling because Peck is basically a better shot maker in the set position. Now, Yellen, see, there, there's a potential waffle face. That's, just, that's exactly the situation we talked about before. Where he serves it, he is backing in, not know exactly where Yellen is, and Yellen walks back, and it, that should be construed, and no question about a hinder. Charlie, it doesn't appear as though either player is pleased with the official. Well, the confrontation's heating up, and I think a lot of it's due to the lack of familiarity that this particular referee has with the American style of play. We'll return with more action in this Yellen Peck semifinal match right after we pause for this message. The way this match has deteriorated, Charlie, it's probably a good thing the official is beyond the reach of the two players, Yellen and Peck. Well, that won't save him all the time. I remember back in Oceanside in the 70 California Championships, the calls were so bad that one of the opponents ran out up the crow's nest and tried to throw the guy into the court, and the referee had to try to stab at him with his pencil <laughs> in his eye to hold him off for help. Peck serving the score 13-8. Good get by Yellen. Peck's got the forehand set up, overhead drive. Nice little soft shot. Great shot down the right wall as he wrong-footed Yellen. Yellen was expecting the ball to carry him down the left wall, and Peck flicked it with his wrist down the right. 14. Peck's taking his time here. One fault. The referee's called a fault on that. Yes. Of course I did. You said 14-8. No, I did not. I said 14-8. Did he say 14-8? Peck's claiming that the score was not called, and therefore he was not supposed to serve. Technical. There's a technical being called. God dang, technical. That's a little bit harsh, I think, because it's... It's, uh, he's from Texas, and dang is not a curse word by any stretch of the imagination. However, that does mean there's been a deduction in one point from his score. But the referee was right. He did call 14 to 8. He did announce the score. He did do that. Now, in the United States, there is not a violation for holding the ball like that once the score is called, as long as you do serve within 10 seconds. That was a quick 10 seconds. Yellen doesn't seem the least bit interested in what is taking place. Well, the match has soured a little bit at this point. There's been bickering after virtually every rally, and it's certainly not consistent with the normally good sportsmanlike behavior of these two contestants. In fact, they're two of the better light players on the tour to play, despite being excellent players. Yellen's hitting balls behind his back, and 
Uh, I don't know. I think I'm back in the losing horse in this horse race. To steal a line, this one doesn't really appear suitable for primetime fare. But each of the uh, each of these respective rooting sections uh, seem to be having a good time back there. And with each of these guys, it's, you, you know, you got to root by the pound almost. Nice backhand pin shot, but it's easy to kill a ball when your opponent's not even going to run in after it. 18-8. Yellen absolutely nonchalant. Short. He walked over. It was, I don't know, it's time to stop, stop the fight. 18-8. For the match to end this way, T.S. Eliot once said, not with a bang, but with a whimper. <laughs> well, Yellen did manage to uh, pick up two more points, but Peck prevailed. He won the game by a score of 21-11. So let's now take a look at the winning point, the game point, and the match point for Dave Peck. Dave takes his customary service stance, drives right on through the ball, which is an excellent few viewers to copy. Gets the hard serve to the left. Yellen comes out with it down that left side. A great retrieve by the big man. It's coming down the left again. Yellen tries the cross court low hard drive into the right corner. Yellen tries to snap it. He didn't see it again. He thought he should get a hinder on that one. It's only the final bad call of the match. The way that game deteriorated, it almost appeared as though Yellen was centering you on the little wager we had. <laughs> well, it's too bad it worked out that way, but. In essence, I don't think that match decided on who's two or three, and we'll have to wait for the future. Let's join Scott O. Mike, the great match we were expecting between you and David Peck didn't really materialize. Were you frustrated with some of the calls? Well, there were a lot of, a lot of poor calls, and uh, I guess I let them get to me a little bit. And uh, then again, Dave played pretty well, and I uh, never really got going. He played a real strong game and kept me off balance, but those calls were the worst I've seen, and they bothered me. Well, certainly the score between the second and third ranked players in the tour should have been closer. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt about it. And Dave and I have demonstrated some of the best matches, I think, in the tour this season. And it'll get back to that. It's just that uh, I let the calls bother me a lot more than he did. That was all. David, you were hitting the ball well? I felt really strong during the whole match. I, uh, I've lost a little weight, about four or five pounds. And during the match? <laughs> I lost about 10 during the match. Yeah. And uh, I feel a lot quicker than I have in the past. And I, uh, I feel really strong right now. I, uh, Four, yeah, four or five pounds. And so, uh, okay. look, you're going to face Marty Hogan in the final. Everybody likes to play Marty Hogan. You know, it's, it, Marty hits the ball so hard, and uh, you know, it, it's really a pleasure to play somebody of his caliber. Uh, it should be a good match. I'm, you know, I'm not psyched out by him anymore, and I'm just looking forward to playing. Him. Okay, congratulations, Dave. So, David Peck of El Paso, Texas, advances to our men's final against world champion Marty Hogan. You'll see that match in two weeks' time on the International Classic, but next week it's our ladies' final between Karen Walton and Heather McKay. For now, for Charlie Brumfield and Don Whitman, this is Scott Oak saying so long from the Court Sports Club in Winnipeg. I just was fortunate enough to hit some lucky shots and put it away, basically. I'm, I'm killing the ball better than I did. Uh, against Lindsay, especially the first game. So I just got to keep killing it and uh, trying to keep him sort of off balance. Like you thought you'd have to, you are working hard. I'm working extremely hard. He's, this guy is so tough. Uh...